Hello, everyone. Um, as someone who now runs an advertising agency that has probably sold more uh, cars, chocolate and televisions than any other, I'm not sure I feel very comfortable on this stage, but I do have a point of view as to how advertising has perhaps contributed to the problem we've got today that Mark was outlining, and, uh, and we do, there is something we can do about it. Um, let me just find my pictures, because I'm in advertising, so we have to show pictures. I can't find them. I shall just start my narrative without it. Shall I just do that? I'm going to, ah, there we go. Which one did I press? So that's my theme, really, is can advertising make you unhappy? Uh, these are some quotes that I found about it that are fun. The first one is by um, the man called David Ogilvy, who's, in theory, the founder of modern advertising, so he would think it's OK. And his view is that advertising is only evil when it's advertising evil things. Uh, when I look back a bit further into history, it, it transpires that people aren't so keen on it. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald thought its contribution to humanity was exactly minus zero, not very uh, positive. And H.G. Uh, Wells thought it was legalised lying. So I think uh, history would be against it, so let's see what we can do about it. On the face of it, advertising should make people feel terribly happy, right? Because everybody at Features and Advertising looks just so absolutely delighted to be alive. Uh, this was recently voted the best advert ever by, by the industry. Uh, she's obviously delighted. She just discovered she's got breasts. Is that wow. Uh, so she's thrilled. And on the face of it, I think obviously a lot of men, particularly driving past that billboard, were happy. But my question is, what does that do in the long term? And I've picked... Uh, sorry, I'm talking very quick. It's because we've got four minutes and we've got loads to get through. Uh, these are the random selection of adverts adverts that I picked off the web, and I just love them for their, uh, for their absolute inanity, really. So there's, where do you start? I love this one in the bottom, in the middle. It's a family who are running along in white linen on a beach, and they're obviously just so happy because they've got their insurance needs sorted out. Uh, so that's all you need to do to have a perfect holiday. On the left, uh, BMW have just done a, their whole global positioning is about joy, so that dead easy, just save up, buy a Beamer, and you're going to be delighted for the rest of your life. Uh, on the right-hand side, quite a lot of people have got toddlers in the room, I've got one, uh, so you know how easy it is to cheer them up, right? And all it takes is to give them a bottle of cow and gate formula milk and they'll be high kicking for the rest of the summer. Uh, and my final, my absolute favourite on this chart is the top middle one. Uh, that's an ad for the teaching profession, and I, I'm not a teacher, but I know a lot of teachers, and obviously that profession is a laugh from start to finish. So um, <laughs> that is surely, if advertising or projecting these kind of images, then everybody is... Uh, all the better for it, right? Obviously not. I think uh, that kind of imagery builds up a wave of dissatisfaction with your life. Obviously you don't buy it at a conscious level, but uh, the cycle is created that this is the kind of life you should be having. Have you not got that already, then what's wrong with you? So we, we get into a very subtle, but I think constant uh, notion of dissatisfaction and discontent, which ultimately will lead to a lowering of happiness. But I do believe that if you shut down every ad agency in the world, the problem would not go away or get any better. Um, I've picked on a few of my favourites here. Has, uh, the movie and Industry. Has anybody seen Eat, Pray? Anyone had the, uh, the misfortune? I sat through it on a plane. Uh, if you uh, has trapped, and if, uh, if you did watch that film and you believed it, you'd think that having a breakdown in your 40s is the best thing that could happen to you because you're going to look fabulous and uh, paint and meditate and shag your way around Europe, frankly, and it will be the <laughs> best year you've ever had. So that's obviously nonsense. Uh, I've picked out Grazia. I'm addicted to Grazia. Hands up, I can't stop reading it. And at the end of every week, there's no question I'm better informed about how many pairs of wedges I should have in my wardrobe at any given time. However, I feel slightly soiled every time I read it at the, at the level of, of discontent, really, that it shows, uh, the stuff it shows you that you should be doing and you should be thinking. And I can't, but I can't give it up. Well, in fact, I try to give it up. I try to uh, stop my subscription, and they keep sending me it, which I think is uh, <laughs> sort of a nice metaphor for where we are. Uh, Television. I picked out Friends as the biggest uh, television program in the world and watched by literally billions of people. If you watched that, you would think that you were watching. Uh, there was nothing, no problem in the world that could be solved that couldn't be answered in half half an hour episode and a cup of coffee. Uh, and so it's about. And then the last image that I've shown is uh, a designer called Erdem who to represent the fashion industry. He's a great designer, and he dresses amazing women like Sarah Brown and Michelle Obama, and yet he uses uh, anorexic, underage models in his work, like as do the whole fashion industry, and I think there's a problem here. So my point is there is a problem, but it's not only being created by advertising. We're part of it. And I'm going to uh, skip on if I can, because 
I do think there's a solution to be had from it. I think we've got a big problem. I think there's a big solution. I think advertising industry can probably play its part. These are two of my favourite posters ever. So I, I don't love the Wonderbra ad, you might have guessed. I do love these two. I think um, the, uh, you, you probably remember them. It takes 40 dumb animals to wear a, a fur coat, but only one to wear it. I think it was one of the most powerful statements Petter ever made. And it pretty much arrested the use of fur and fashion for 20 years. Uh, the one on the left is the pregnant man, and it was one done in the 80s to try and get men to uh, play their part in contraception. I think could do being run again, actually. It's a, it's a really strong ad. So advertising at its heart, now it sells people shit they don't need, by and large. But at its heart, it makes people think and behave differently. And that's what I think we need in this day and age. Some brands are doing it really well. Dove tried to do it a few years ago about uh, showing women of all ages in a category that traditionally shows the, the airbrushed uh, the airbrush types. I, my, personally, I think it went, it didn't go far enough, but at least it was trying. I think much more interesting are things that uh, are happening now where brands have stopped saying things about themselves and they've just started doing good things. So they're marketing themselves by what they actually do rather than what they say. So I think that's the new model we're moving to. And as a, someone who runs an ad agency, I do have influence in my clients to help them do that. Um, but you can really all play your parts because if you don't buy the stuff you see, if you literally don't buy it, then don't buy it because if you don't give them your money, they'll certainly change the way they're doing it. So we all do have a role to play. Be happy. Bye. <laughs>